What up, fellow Kung Fu movie fans? This is the 12th Venom Gary Williams coming to you with a very special, uh, at least for me, and I'm sure all the other fans out there, very special interview with Sifu Robert Samuels of R4 Films. Good evening, Sifu Samuels. How are you this evening? How are you, my brother? How are you? Good to see you. Hi, you everybody. Too. Film Fan Dojo. Thank you for having me. I appreciate that. Thank you for uh, taking the time out to talk to us. So you you've been yes. quite busy as of late. You've had you got a lot of yeah. things going on, which is good for you and good for us yes. as fans. The most recent release that uh, you've had is Made in Chinatown. So um, yes. we're going to do some talking about Made in Chinatown. And um, how were you first approach about co-directing Made in Chinatown? Um, <clears throat> it was through, uh, Mark Wiley. Um, he's from Philadelphia, but I, I hadn't met him, you know, until about three or four years ago, but we met at, uh, Demetrius Angel's urban action showcase. Um, and he, you know, he approached me, he said he was from Philadelphia. Okay. He's a brother right there. Um, he said he had a film that he was interested in doing, you know, called made in Chinatown. Um, he said it was a comedy, a martial arts comedy. You know, I had never really done that before. Um, so I said, sure, I'd be interested, you know? So I think about six months went by and uh, he, he called me again and uh, he said he had funding for the film and that he wanted me to uh, co-direct the film uh, with the, uh, with uh, initially it was Art Camacho, but then Art left because he had other film commitments. Uh, and so uh, myself and uh, James Liu, who was initially hired for um, action director, um, him and I decided to kind of co-direct the film ourselves. Okay. That's so yeah, it was a, it was a fun experience. That's cool. It's a very, it's a very, <laughs> it's a very entertaining movie, and it's funny. It has action. Um, I I really love the characters in the movie. But you 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 guys have an all star cast. You have big names such as Raymond Berry, Vincent Pastore, Tony Darrow, Lo Meng, Chu Chi Chi Ling. What was it like working with all these yeah. big names? Mm -hmm. um primarily my background as you know was um but to actually be able to work with american uh a-list actors that was a, a dream come true um that was my first big directing assignment you know for a big budget film um and you know tony darrow he was involved throughout the entire casting process um benny pastora um we had a we had a a bunch of guys from the uh, Sopranos, and I think it was eight in total. Chris Caldovini, Paul Bergazi, Artie Pascal, Tony Ray Rossi, Tony Darrow, Pastore. Yeah, just the list goes on. And I was just amazed to be able to work with those actors. Um, and of course, uh, Lomang and I, we didn't know each other in Hong Kong, but we met each other subsequently afterwards. And uh, we worked together for for many years, over the past 10 years, we, we worked together uh, doing music videos in, in, in London with Drew Hill and, and working with Nick Quested. So him and I had a long history. Um, so I was happy for him to uh, come on and join. He actually left um, Ip Man 4. Um, he was filming that and he left there and came directly to film uh, Made in Chinatown. So I was honored that he did that. So, yeah, it was a crazy, crazy film. <laughs> a lot of fun. Yeah. It seems like it. And, you know, you have these veteran actors, but the cast, what I like about it, the cast is balanced out by up and coming actors such as Shu Ya Chang, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Jay Chow, Selena Ao, and Emmanuel Brown. What yeah. type of energy did these young, younger actors bring to the set and to the production? Yeah. So I had um, actually, I, you know, when I, I found out it was Shu Ya Chang, I, uh, called a friend of mine, Bay Logan, out in Hong Kong and uh, asked him because he had worked with her on uh, Crouching, Tiger, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon 2. Um, he said she was a joy to work with, a pleasant person. So, you know, I just wanted to get an idea for her, her as an actress. Um, and lo and behold, she was amazing. Um, a fresh talent, new energy, young energy. Um, Jay Kwan as well, you know, upstart talent, you know, paid his dues in the independent world and he finally got his little opportunity so i was very happy for that um just a, a manny brown as far as i'm concerned like man he was really one of my favorite characters in the film um i don't want to give away too much of the plot structure but you know he doesn't play the normal kung fu guy in that in that particular film and i just you know i, I i'm glad mark kind of wrote that role 
um, which is very inclusive of all ethnicities and all types of people. So I took pride in uh, kind of presenting that particular role because it was something that had never been done before. And based on the critics and the, and the uh, reviews, he was one of the standout actors in the film. So it was an honor to work with Manny Brown. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, he he seemed so, to yeah, really all the young people actually they, they were all very talented and they brought a, a sense of balance to to how we were doing it. See, most people I, I I I've been doing kung fu films for 28, 30 years close to. Um, and I just wanted to try something out of my niche, you know. Um, and this wasn't a straight action film. It was it gave me an opportunity as a director um to kind of delve into characters, delve into personalities and and and, and just societal issues that affect the world today and, and take take a lighthearted approach to some of the stereotypes that exist in, in, in all communities, be it the African-American, the Asian communities. Um, it, yeah, there are some, some, some puns in there dealing with ethnicities, but it's done in a respectful way in order to kind of bring light and humor to, 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 to how we should view each other as, as we are all one human race. So I hope people, when they see the film, they, they don't go expecting, you know, this is the latest Donnie and master of martial arts, man, because that's not what the film is about. The film is about character. The film is about lighthearted love, acceptance, um, people trying to find themselves. And, and it comes about through a, a bunch of hijinks and, and humor and with a healthy dose of Kung Fu. Very, very true. And, and I want to speak to the diversity of the cast. I mean, this, you know, Made in Chinatown is one of the most diverse casts that I've seen on screen. You have Italian-Americans, an African-American, you, you have uh, Asian-Americans all acting together. And as you said, it's little jokes, but it's really nothing overtly stereotypical or disrespectful mm -hmm. about their interactions, but yet still funny and still kind of culturally, some cultural miss uh, cues, you know, so mm -hmm. to speak. Do you, as a filmmaker and, a, and, a, and based in America, do you think that this type of diversity is going to be the future of films? Like, you know, based on our population, it has to mirror our population in this country. So do you think that films like Made in right. Chinatown are going to go uh, going to help with uh, these diverse cast ranges? I think I think so. I think that uh, the game has been changed with the advent of our digital streaming network. Now, you know, we're not solely dependent on the, the old structure of how films were made, you know. Uh, back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, you realize the, uh, the, the major studios owned everything. They owned the actors, they owned the studios, they owned the theaters. Um, so they had a, a monopoly grip on, on how things were presented to us visually as far as motion pictures. However, with the advent of digital technology, that opened up a whole new realm for, for just about anyone with a professional sense that wanted to actually get their product out there. And now, you know, as you realize, you know, we had DVDs at one point, Blu-rays, which is still out there, but streaming seems to be the route of the future for right now. And uh, unfortunately, you know, with the pandemic that, that occurred, it allowed a lot of us time for uh, our, to use our Netflix, which we're probably sitting idle on our handphones and tablet devices and things of that nature. But just the overall convenience of, of, of being able to watch and enjoy uh, your source of entertainment at the hand, at your own hands, you know, at any time you want. I think that's definitely uh, the future. It's hard to come back from that. Do I believe that theaters are gone? No, I don't. I believe that uh, there will be tenfold films out there, you know, franchise films, things like that. And of course, everyone will want to go for the movie going experience. Um, however, you know, I, I, for me personally, as a director right now, I really like to concentrate on a lot of the streaming platforms and, you know, the independent film structures now. So, yeah. That, that sounds good. Things are changing. We're going to talk a little bit later about Red Sash Theater and some things, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when we get into some yeah. other talk. But I, I want to ask you something about the first fight scene in the movie it is between two legends. Without giving a lot away, mm -hmm. but it's between Sifu Lomang and Grandmaster Chu Chi Ling. How was it to get th those two to... Mm -hmm. Work together to do that fight scene. I mean, that's like an iconic matchup to me. Yeah. Um, well, as you realize, you know, Lomong has been around since the Shaw brothers, the golden age, you know. 
Uh, he's been around a long time. Chu Chi Ling as well. You know, Chu Chi Ling was my uh, my manager and really is the guy who really first got me in, into the business. Um, he was my manager for three years in Hong Kong. Um, I think that, you know, when I want to present those two to be, you know, Mano we Mano, Lomong is better than Chu Chi Ling, that sort of thing, you know. So it afforded an opportunity just so the fans could actually see them how they are today and appreciate, you know, the talent that guy gave them, the vision that they, they the, the images they gave us, uh, and just give it a lighthearted, you know, sense of, a, of action that, hey, we got two Ameri- we got two Hong Kong action stars in an American film, you know, for the first time together. They've never worked together. So that was also an opportunity for me as a first to have those two work together in a film. They knew each other in Hong Kong many years, but they didn't, they didn't really work together. So this was a um, tremendous uh, responsibility for me because it was Lo Mong's first image in America. He had never done an American film, you know, so I wanted to make sure I, I presented him uh, correctly and for the, for the fans to see. Um, it was a challenge for him because he didn't speak much English. However, you know, he was dedicated to the role. Um, we had uh, translators working with them. Our, our casting directors work with them. Um, our producers work with them. So if you in the movie, he speaks English and Chinese, you know, and it's it, it's balanced pretty pretty much to the point where you kind of understand and, and his is he has a very uh his comic timing is just incredible you know he, he, even though he doesn't know english i mean he's handling scenes with raymond barry raymond barry sons of anarchy justified i mean it's incredible you know like like he's a seasoned veteran so yeah that was a pleasure and Chu Chi ling everyone knows him from kung fu hustle the tailor you know uh, he's done uh, hundreds of films in Hong Kong, but that is the standout film for him. And it's kind of, it's kind of carried him. So, uh, it, for me, that was bittersweet because again, 30 years ago, he was the man who, who represented me in Hong Kong and got me my first opportunity. So to be able to, to cast him in my first directorial American film, you know, that was a true honor, you know, as if I paid it back. So yeah, that was amazing. Those two are legends. Yes, they are. And now you co-directed with James Liu, who also appears in the film. You guys seem mm-hmm. to have like great chemistry. Like, you know, if I didn't know, I would have thought it was one director. <laughs> was this the first uh, project that you two worked on? Uh, yeah, it was the first project we had worked on. But James and I have known each other for a while. Um, he's big brother. That's all I can say. You know, he uh, he's won an Emmy for... Um, uh, what's the film? Um, uh, Luke Cage, he won an Emmy for that. Um, first stunt coordinator. So like to learn from him and to work with him, it truly was an honor. I mean, he's such a funny guy too, but he's the consummate professional. And, you know, it doesn't matter how, how, how long you've been in this business or, or what you know, um, you can learn from everyone, everyone. And just the mere fact of you know, working with this man who worked on Big Trouble in Little China. I mean, you, you can just, you can't even count the, uh, the American classic films that he's, he's had his hands in. Um, and to this day, he continues. Um, so, yeah, that was truly an honor uh, to work with him. Um, and we had, we had some great conversations. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to working together again in the future. Hopefully there'll be a part two to this if the public likes it. Well, let's hope. Let's hope. Now, the comedy in this movie is very well done. I got to ask you, how much was ad lib? Because some of the stuff have to be ad lib. <laughs> well, I tell you, Tony Darrow is like insanely funny. I mean, like it, it's hard to even concentrate and, 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 you know, what I'm trying to direct because his one liners just, just come so quick, you know, and uh, Vinny Pastore, you know, he's he, he's funny as heck as well. So it was it was a constant, you know, the, the set was very light and it was it was always fun and i think you know for me as 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 the first time director i think that that was you know what a man could, what, what what more could i ask for you know um just to be able to work with these luminaries and and you know i was tested i, I knew i was being tested in some respects you know because they worked with scorsese you know de niro you name it you know and uh okay who's the young guy over there he's the director all right let's see where he's got you know hey bobby let me ask you something you know uh, one other uh, gentleman that was in the film who, who helped me tremendously uh, is uh, Paul Bergese. He's a director in his own right. Um, he's worked in, in countless films. Uh, he's an, also a, uh, a Scorsese alumni. Uh, and, you know, 
some of the things he was he was telling me because I wanted to find out about Italian culture and I wanted to present them in the proper way. Um, so um, Paul Bergese actually, you know, we had many conversations and he, he he told me, you know, it's acceptable to say this, acceptable to say that, you know, mannerisms and things of that nature. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was brilliant. You know, Chris Caldovino, my God, he's such a brilliant actor and he is funny. His comedic timing is just impeccable. Cool, cool. Yeah. People, when you see this, you're going to see what I mean about some of those lines had to be ad libbed. <laughs> but you know, as a kung fu yeah. fan, I mean, look, it's 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 a campy film. I mean, it can't be taken. You can't take this serious, you know. I mean, come on, think about it. Chinese guy wants to be Italian, okay? <laughs> wants to join the mob. It, it doesn't happen. So it can only be fun, you know. How do, how can this happen? So take the journey with me and watch this kid try to identify with something and, you know, the trials and tribulation that goes with actually finding out who he really is. You know, I think that's, that's, it's, it's a message involved, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I think so. Now as a Kung Fu fan, I like that. Um, well, I'll give him too much away. Real Kung Fu masters appear in this movie. Yes. Such as uh, Grandmaster Tak Waing, Sifu Paul Ko, mm -hmm. Sifu Paul Sun, uh, mm -hmm. Peter and Guy, Stephen Chan and others. Yes. Did your own Kung Fu background and lineage and your relationship help bring these masters to the film? Actually, um, uh, Pak Ng, I've known him for a while, you know, in New York, Ujjal Pai. Um, I study Hong Gar here in Philadelphia um, and him and my, my Sifu were very good friends. Um, in fact, we filmed this, uh, a scene at uh, my teacher's uh, school in Philadelphia and uh, talk was involved in that. So it was kind of nice seeing those two come together. Um, I think, you know, from Mark's perspective, Mark was uh, very good friends with those masters because, you know, Mark is uh, involved with, with the um, traditional aspects of martial arts very heavily. Um, we wanted to present the martial arts from true Kung Fu masters, not just picking actors that could do the moves, you know, all super fast and super good. We wanted that that pure sense, you know, because that had to juxtapose what Lo Mang was feeling about martial arts in the film, you know, it, you know, his attitude toward traditional martial arts. So for me to bring in the young Kung Fu superstars, you know, and all that, that, that wouldn't work. You know, I felt this the traditional aspect of martial arts to be presented to show the juxtaposition between the character was important. So, yeah, that was the first. And, you know, I'm glad we did it. Okay. Now, how as a, as a Kung Fu master yourself, Hong Kong Stuntman Association, disciple of Sammo Hung, I mean, a Kung Fu movie star yourself. How how important is it to you to bring an authenticity of Kung Fu to the screen? Well, that's 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 extremely important me because. I don't I don't cheat the audience for the experience. I want the audience to understand the characters, the breadth of the characters, the breadth of the story. Um, I think that's important. Uh, when you start getting gimmicky and how can I say it, formulaic in, in, in your approach to, to certain films, that gets boring, that gets repetitive, that gets ah, seen and been and done that, you know. So whatever I do, I try to make sure that it has its own motif, its own structure, its own feeling. Um, and no one film that I do, that I do excuse me, kind of replicates the next film. So I always want to constantly keep that, that creative energy going, you know? And how I do that is uh, by working with some of the young uh, upstart talents in, in, in the film world, you know? They may not be at that particular level yet, um, but they are definitely uh, just as good as the ones that are at that level. So I take pride in, in working with uh, first time directors and, and directors that are that are that are not well well known, but have a, a firm structure, a creative sense of energy, and just a real balls to the wall approach to filmmaking. I like that, you know. A um, couple of couple of directors that I'm, I've worked with was uh, Joey Min. Mm -hmm. um, he's I've, I've done three or four films with them, art school uh, dropouts. You know, um, they they do business right. That's all I can say. You know, they're very creative. Um, they have a huge following, um, and I like. I'm about to do another film with uh, Joey in, in two weeks uh, where we play Shaolin Monks. So stay tuned. Okay. That, that's going to be very interesting. OK, that's I'm looking forward to that. Now, you just mentioned something. I think um, the audience 
uh, is probably interested in um, mentorship because you're so experienced. And is 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 that going to help the the future of the young filmmaker having someone such as yourself, very experienced, very knowledgeable to mentor them in their projects, especially in this digital world that we have where they can put out a lot of projects, but they can we can see them get incrementally better. We can see mm-hmm. where they start and get better. Do you think that mentorship is a is an important part of someone experience uh, such as you? <clears throat> yes, I, I do. Um, this is a very difficult business to enter to get into. Um, you got to be in SAG in order to get in films. But how do you get in SAG if you can't get the films? It's like a catch twenty two. Um, so it's very difficult for a lot of young talent, and I mean, some people out there are extremely talented. Um, so. I want to be able to give people an opportunity that they normally wouldn't have, at least on an independent way. I can give them a visual image that they can present to an audition or something like that, you know, which which feels almost like a. A a big motion picture um, and gives give them. So, yeah, that's all about what I do is giving people opportunities and working with uh, independent uh, actors as well as, you know, established actors, you know. Um, I just like the creative sense of the filmmaking process, you know? Um, so yeah, there are a lot of, uh, I'm working with, a, actually I'm doing a film in Mexico in July. It's called Jugando Con Fuego. Um, and that's being done by uh, director, director Nicholas Ortiz. Um, he's a young director. He did uh, the award-winning film, uh, Black Betty, independent film. Uh, it was gritty, uh, dealing with the Russian mob, but it was just something about how he did that. I really appreciate it. So, you know, we talked and he approached me with the story and, you know, we said, hey, let's let's do it. So, you know, it's, it's actually the first film where I'll be a, the lead actor. I've been co-starring all my life, you know, so um, I actually play the lead in this particular film. So uh, three films, th- three film groups joined together uh, for this particular venture. That would be uh, Deviant Children Productions, um, R4 Films and Team One Take, you know, you, you strength in numbers. You know, we all have pretty much uh, the same creative sense. We've all worked for each other at some point or another uh, during our productions. So we figured, you know, why don't we just put it all together and just come with a, a really big approach to uh, post pandemic filmmaking. So we wanted to attack it with a bang. So yeah, look forward to that. Ugando con fuego. We start for principal photography in, um, in July. And also we have, um, uh, the kid from Ka- the man from Kathmandu uh, star um, Jose Manuel, Puerto Rican action star. He's going to be joining in, us in the in the film. He's playing a prominent role. So yeah, stay tuned. You know, it's going to be action packed. It's basically um, Man on Fire meets Equalizer. So looking forward yeah. to that. Looking forward to that. Now, uh, the gang fight at the end of Made in Chinatown is is both intense and fun at the same time. Uh, yeah. How long did it take to shoot and any particular memories that stand out about that scene? Yeah, that that scene took uh, that scene took a while to shoot. And as you saw, it was it was just <laughs> 100 people out there fighting. Um, so that was a that took tremendous coordination and, 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 and coordination. Um, I remember art, not art. I mean, uh, um, James Lou and I sitting down discussing, you know, how we were going to present this particular and battle, you know, and overall, the feeling of Made in China was was we were trying to bring back the big trouble in little Chinatown vibe, you know, it's campy, you know, Jack's Barrel and all that stuff. So we wanted to approach it with the type of battles that they had in big trouble in little China. So we decided that, you know, we just wanted to use that as the motif and kind of but use today's action stars to carry out the job, you know, um, I had my brother in there. I got to work with him for the first time. Uh, Tom Caserto, he's a fellow Hong Kong stuntman. Um, so that was an honor to work with him. Uh, Hector Sorio, he served as assistant action coordinator in Orlando. Um, so yeah, um, Jay Kwan brought in his guys from LA. Uh, James Liu brought in his guys from New York. Uh, and it was just, you know, everybody said, listen, let's just, let's just try and make this the biggest, baddest ending possible, you know? You know, we wanted to give the fans something to, to be respectful. And then, you know, with Lomong involved in that battle as well. So, yeah, I hope th- I hope everyone likes that battle because that's the one everyone seems to like. Yeah, it was fun. Now, Made in Chinatown is out. How can we watch it? 
Uh, Made in Chinatown is out right now in uh, North America. Um, it's out on on demand. All your cable providers should have it. Uh, Comcast, Xfinity. Um, recently, Xbox joined on uh, iTunes, um, Fandango. Uh, there's just a there's just a ton of places. Uh, but yeah, it's out everywhere right now. And then DVD, Blu-rays will start. I think the 25th of this month. But we have something coming special that we're doing soon with uh, Urban Action Showcase and Vision Films concerning Made in Chinatown and another motion picture that's out here now. Um, so stay tuned. We'll, uh, we'll be making that announcement shortly as well. But yeah, Made in Chinatown is everywhere. Uh, then it hits uh, overseas market uh, August 11th, my birthday. Oh, okay. <laughs> It'll hit the overseas market. So that'll be worldwide August 11th. So that's the greatest birthday present in the world. You know, I couldn't have timed it any better. <laughs> Yes, yes. And Film Fan Dojo recommends that you see Made in Chinatown. It's a fun movie. Uh, I, my daughter was walking across uh, the living room as I was watching it, and she kind of stopped and looked and said, hey, this is funny. So if like a 18-year-old can do that, then you know you've you've done well. Because she just a scene, right. and she was like, hey, this is kind of funny. Yeah. And so, you know, please do yourself a favor, fellow fans go watch this movie support it uh purchase it rent it use all the platforms you can we want to see more of this from r4 films and sifu robert samuels thank this you has been, i appreciate all the support i really do thank you sifu for joining us for our talk about made in chinatown yes again available on demand amazon prime Google Play, iTunes, and they don't call it iTunes anymore. Apple TV. Um, Apple TV, right. Apple TV, yeah, they don't do iTunes anymore. Apple TV. Fandango. Fandango, Dish Network. Hoopla, Dish right. Network, Comcast. Right. Mm -hmm. And all the other digital platforms. Look for it physically uh, out on DVD and Blu-ray soon. And we will mm -hmm. do our best to provide you with that information. Thank you, Sifu Robert Samuels. Yes, you're quite welcome. You're quite welcome.